Hey, what's up guys? I'm your host Snows for Boot Sequence and today we've got so many news, but so little time. How about a full episode of In Case You Didn't Know? Roll the intro. Do you remember Project Larrabee? Probably not. It was Intel's last attempt at a graphics card before their recent announcement of bringing new GPUs in 2020. While the architect of Project Larrabee, Tom Forsyth, what a great name, he is going back at Intel as an architect in Raja Kuduri's group. He says he's not sure entirely what he'll be working on, but it's pretty clear what he'll be doing, right? I give him my blessing as long as he can bring some sweet price to performance architecture to the game. Then we have Intel's CEO who resigned over a relationship with an employee. I'm not going to become a gossip YouTube channel, but basically Intel has a strict no fraternizing with employees, especially when you're an executive. In the meantime, Robert Swan, the CFO, will act as interim CEO. It seems as though things are kind of on a roller coaster at Intel lately. All right, let's move on to something a little more spicy. We've got some alleged Threadripper 2 Cinebench score and CPU Z screenshots. Apparently, the new high end 32 core monster will be named the Threadripper 2990X. According to the CPU Z screenshot, the TDP of the chip is 250 watts and its base clock seemed to be confirmed at 3.4 gigahertz. As for the XFR2 clocks, the chip seems to reach all the way up to 4.2 gigahertz. Now take this with a grain of salt since this comes from a Chinese website where I can barely read anything because I don't read Chinese. Then we have Microsoft who decided VR is not for console gaming. They completely pulled back plans for VR support on the Xbox One and honestly, I kind of get it. VR is great when you have the horsepower to run it properly, but with things like Gear VR or the Oculus Go or even the PSVR, the low resolution textures just don't get you immersed like it should. Sure, art styles matter, but when was the last time you saw a good VR game with great art style move into the mobile space? They're probably reserving that for their next Xbox consoles. Anyways, what do you think? Would you have wanted VR on the Xbox One? Speaking of Xbox, have you seen how they teamed up with Nintendo to make a crossplay ad? They released an ad to showcase how both the Switch and the Xbox can crossplay using none other than Minecraft. This is definitely not a jab at Sony, right? Hmm, it is. It's a jab at Sony, definitely. With Sony holding Fortnite accounts hostage because of their terrible non crossplay policy, I think it's a good move, especially since Nintendo in the past has been known as the closed platform. All right, let's stop the segment for a second. Remember a few weeks ago, I said that macOS had a feature called Quick Preview, where you can open photos, videos, documents, and other things for quick previews? And that is a spacebar preview like on OS X. And also that I wanted Windows 10 to have this, the newest update? Well, turns out someone made an app that does that on the Windows Store called Quick Look, and it's pretty amazing. You should check it out. You just press the spacebar on any file and it'll try to create a quick preview. You can then press enter if you want to open it in its native app or the spacebar again to close it. Just to be clear, this is not a sponsorship or anything. I just thought it was a pretty cool feature and wanted to share it with you guys. Moving on to some gaming news, PUBG's Sandhawk map is live. The smaller map went through four rounds of testing and is now out. The smaller map apparently makes it a lot more fun, especially if you're playing solos. The Xbox port of the map will apparently arrive in late summer. And of course we can't have PUBG without Fortnite. The recent nerfs to the building system is stirring quite the debate. Some people think that the building should be essential as it is a big part of the game's success. But I personally think that they are restoring balance between good gameplay and infinite build-offs. And I think that this is what Epic Games wants too. The Fortnite team is quoted as saying, it's important to support a variety of late game strategies that don't boil down to just build. Do you agree? Let me know down below. I'd love to know your input on that specific situation with Fortnite. Wow, so that was a lot of news. Now let's answer a question from you guys and today it is, how did you get the pictures that are hanging on your wall? Well, they're pretty much custom made. I photoshopped this area with the screenshot from the game Firewatch. 
I put in snows, of course. I put in the press start. The other one says press pause. And I framed it with a couple of two by, one by twos, two by threes. I'm not sure, look. It's just lumber, and then I stapled it in the back, and boom, this is actually a beat board from, um, from the dollar store, two for one dollar, it's very, very useful. But yeah, that's that's all it is, it's uh, fairly simple. I used the matte finish print at Staples because I didn't want it to reflect too much while I was filming videos. Anyways, that's pretty much it for the news, guys. Hopefully you've enjoyed. Don't forget to stay frosty and click right here, right here, to see the latest, uh, latest video, right here and to click right here to subscribe to the channel. That would be greatly appreciated. Oh my God, how am I gonna do my intro if I'm holding this? I'm gonna stop holding it. Stay frosty.